Fire away, whoever's ready. Eric, what does this moment mean for you? It's pretty, uh, it's pretty special. Uh, obviously, where I've been and my situation being here five weeks ago, just chilling at home, to be on the cusp of a Super Bowl is, is pretty uh, hard to fathom. But we're here, and I'm just trying to maximize this opportunity with this, this great organization, these men. And go get that ring, baby. That's about it. I got a question. Yeah, yes, ma'am. If you do get that ring, are you coming back next season or is this going to be a No chance of ever playing again, unless the stars align somehow, some way. But uh, no, uh, over the course of the last five weeks reminded me why I uh, hung it up in the first place. It's, it, it's tough to do this, especially as o the older you get. So... Thankfully, I'm uh, able to get through it and feeling amazing and ready to give it all I got on Sunday and right off in the sunset, hopefully, as a Super Bowl champ. What would that mean to be able to do that game? I mean, this is why you play. This is why you put everything into it. Uh, started 15 years ago when I first got in the league. And you play this game uh, to win a championship, and it's the ultimate team sport relies on so many factors, so many moving parts, and so many things have to go your way, right? For, for, for to have a chance in the, to, to have a chance at the Super Bowl. So to be here in this moment, I feel like it's it's uh, I'm meant to be here with this with this team in whatever role I, I've been asked each week, and now on the cusp of uh, the biggest game of the year. We're ready for it. We're we have that. Uh, that focus, but also that loose, having fun mindset. It's a very unique identity of this team with the veterans leading the way and the young guys just following suit and our leader at the helm with, with Sean. So we just can't wait to get to Sunday and, and see what happens. Yeah, I mean, of course, once I made the decision two years ago, uh, I, I, I was mentally ready to be done, and that's why I made the decision. Could I have kept playing? Of course. You know, it's, uh, you know I'm still able to play, but it, it just mentally, uh, like, like Tom said, if you can't commit 100% to everything that this job entails, you just can't do it. And especially if you have such a high standard of what you are and how you play and everything you pour into it. I mean, nobody understands how many hours you put in that nobody sees. And if you're not mentally committed to that, you just can't do it. And, and that's where I was. I didn't want to deal with the pain. I didn't want to deal with the time and everything it entails. I just mentally couldn't keep up with it. So when I was done, I was done. And, you know, when the stars align, in a sense, to, to be here in this moment, I couldn't live with myself if I didn't take that chance. I didn't have time to sleep on it. No, I had about six hours to make a decision because they were going to figure out what other options they had out there. Uh, no, I mean, it, you look at it, I love challenges. I love proving people wrong. And I, and I know I look at myself as the most mentally toughest dude in this world. So to say that we're crazy for this, it, it was even more motivation and, and more uh, fire to say, why not? Like, why not me? Why why can't I show the world that you could do anything when you put your mind to it? And everybody gets a storybook ending. Are you prepared for that possibility? I'm not. I mean, I've already won, quite honestly. So uh, I, I'm. I all I envision is is us capping this off with a victory. I don't see anything different. And until otherwise, I'll keep believing that. But I mean, nobody gets a second chance like I have five weeks ago, especially a guy who retired for two years. Like, this never happened. So to be back doing something that uh, I love dearly and brought so much happiness to my life for one last run with a bunch of young guys doing something special, I mean, I'm living as free and no pressure ever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, 
you know, we will, we want, we put a plan in place, you know, five weeks ago, you know, being asked to come play Monday night with five weeks of work or five days of work, uh, it was just insane to think about. Right. But, you know, we're like, Hey, let's ease you into this. See how your body feels, see how you react, see if you can still move and groove and do what you want to do. And then each week as we've worked and I've lifted and treatment, everything that it kind of just depended on how I felt on the amount of reps I got, right? And try to uh, increase those as we go. And, you know, accumulated to the Frisco game, playing the whole the whole game. And that was the plan going into that game anyways. Uh, with the whole signal thing, I've done, I've done, I've held the mic, you know, four or five years of my career. So it's nothing new. It's actually uh, beneficial for, I feel for a safety or, or a guy in the secondary to have it because you always know the secondary is going to have the call. And, you know, in an up-tempo, uh, no-huddle type situations, big plays happen because, you know, guys don't know what the call is. So, uh, and, and it's, it's, it's a hard transition if you haven't done it uh, for guys. So it's just a, it's a seamless transition to make me have it, you know, have me do it because I've done it before and I'm, I'm going to be on the field for every play. So uh, it makes sense and it's natural for me to be able to talk to the guys and get the call out, get alerts out and be rolling. So it was kind of mi just made sense uh, as we went through last week. Uh, Raheem mentioned it, and then Sean Sean decided on that, knowing I did it my last year here in 2019. And obviously I'm up to speed with all the checks and, and new verbiage. It's uh, second nature at this point. Eric, what, kind of, what kind of pickup basketball player are you? What, can, what kind am I? Yeah. I'm a killer. I'm a Mamba 2.0. Uh, you know, I don't. I, I love the game. I love competing. And I would say I'm a slasher, attacker, scorer. Uh, lockdown on defense. Uh, I like to facilitate early in games, and then as the games go on, I take over and because I feel I can get my shot at any moment. So uh, that's that's how I kind of am. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not so much for me. Personally, selfishly, like it's just I, I just know that the, that will flow, and the calls will be out, and uh, you know things get things get go rolling fast. It's just hard to get those things out, the communication, the alerts. Uh, so it's uh, outside of the fact that I think our defense will benefit from it. That's it. Nothing more than selfishly. Uh, on my end, it's it's nothing. I mean, I was gonna play great whether. I have it or not, but now as a whole, I feel everything will be more smooth, especially in a big game. The guys can play fast. They're not worrying about, hey, what's the call? Everyone yelling at me, hey, what's the call? It's like, leave that stuff to me, and we all play fast. For sure, for sure. I mean, that, you know, we want, in a game like this, you just want everything to go smoothly. You want to handle, handle the adversity early on in the game. You want everyone to get their feet in the ground locked in on what their role is what their job is getting the checks you don't you don't want to be thinking you just want to play and react and uh what by this we feel that's the best option to, that we can go play fast and let me do the thinking what have i learned in, in what aspect um how special is this unit <laughs> yeah yeah it's uh i i've never really been a you know, part of a defense. I mean, my last year when we got Jalen, but but Debel to be able to have elite, top echelon players at at each level is very rare, right? You're talking about AD and Jalen are two of the best defenders in football at their respective positions, and when you have those core pieces, your defense has a chance to be special, right? And that's the reason we got Jalen in the first place, right? To add to AD, then you add Vaughn, you add Flo, and all these additions over the last couple of years, D. Will, I mean, D. Long, Nick Scott coming in, playing amazing at free safety. So there's a lot of different layers of this defense that have really special qualities in it. And when you have top guys at top positions, especially the positions that affect the game, you have a chance to be really special on defense.
the Bengals, maybe they're a team of destiny. They're the team on the road. What do you think? Is there such a thing? I mean, you could say that about us or say that about me. Uh, honestly, it's going to just come down to who plays the best on Sunday. Uh, nothing else matters up until this point. Right, you get in the game, you get between the white lines. Who plays the best? Who who holds their composure? Who gets their checks out? Who makes the least amount of mistakes? Right, you get in those situations two minute before the half, and then end the game situations. Who executes those situations the, the cleanest and the best? And honestly, I mean, our great players have to play great. I mean, if we play great and and our great players play great, we have a great shot of winning. If we don't, then they're probably gonna win. So I mean. Destiny and all this other stuff. I mean, like I said earlier, all I see is us winning zeros on the clock. I'll get to you. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, we, we have a, obviously the experience four years ago from a lot of guys on this team that played in the Super Bowl uh, have uh, shared their thoughts, obviously. Uh, about the game, we've learned from that game. I I wasn't there. I came the following year, but then also adding guys that you know, like Vaughn, who's been in a couple Super Bowls, who knows what it takes to win a Super Bowl, and then also obviously been on the other side of it. Just having his experience, having his knowledge, uh, having him aside with AD and and AD open up more and and voicing his opinion on things, has really brought this team together in this defense playing the way we've played the last, you know, three weeks of just relishing these moments and understand this doesn't happen often. I mean, th this doesn't happen where the things that have transpired over last year to make it that we're in this position. And Vaughn's been very adamant of just enjoying the moment and just understanding that these things don't happen often and let's go make the most of it. And, and it happens every day. He'll say something to the group or he'll say something to me and we'll echo it across the board that this is special. This is special, let's enjoy it, let's be loose, but also the, the laser focus that we've shown uh, to be in the moment and, and not let it affect us to the point where we don't be who we are. Let's just go be great and, and that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, no worries. Great to see you, buddy. I'll get to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, if most of them are just, they're just uh, shocked that I'm I'm back, uh, not just back, but playing and and having fun and running around like I'm a little kid again, and they just they just love it. Uh, they love me being back. Uh, I can't tell you how many people from from head coaches across the league to competitors to old teammates to even owners and GMs for that fact they're just so happy for this chance uh, you know I, this is anyone that knows me knows what I'm all about and why I play the game and why I give everything I can for my teammates and to be able to be in this situation I mean that you can feel the energy that I that I have behind me uh, from the people that have supported me and it's 15 years running man it's uh you look at all the decisions, all the things, the adversity, the ups and downs have brought me to this moment. And if one of those things don't happen, I don't know if I'm here right now. So it's all meant for a reason, and I'm going to go finish it off Sunday. Have you allowed yourself to go, like, if you win, you're going home to San Diego, a Super Bowl champion. <laughs> what that could be like for a city where your former Yeah. You know, I've been pretty singular focused on uh, – just trying to be my best for this team and uh, growing each week, getting my body back. I mean, I I put in so many hours. I never worked so hard in my life, honestly. Like the last five weeks have been uh, everything I could pour into this mentally, physically, to try to be at my best and try. I mean, I've had to make up for two years physically, not being able to do certain things having to manipulate and change on the fly to make it work, trying to put on my, I mean, I put on eight pounds of muscle in two weeks just to try to help out because I mean, I, I had lost everything. So it's been a hard, hard road, uh, but ultimately it's what it's taken to be at my best in the most important game. And uh, I haven't looked past it to, to think what it, it will be like, honestly, I'm just trying to stay in the moment and do what I can 
try to stay as clear and as focused and as free that I've been over the last three weeks. And when that happens, if it happens, like I think it will, then I'll I'll let you know how it feels then. Yeah, I mean they're they're as good a group or the best group that uh, presented to uh, obviously over the last three weeks, but it, across the board, I mean they are exceptional, uh, explosive. They, you know, I can go around each guy. I mean Jamar Chase, obviously with incredible season he's had up the field, vertical routes, the the yak after those catches, the physical nature he runs with, just an outstanding receiver than Higgins. Just a natural catcher of the ball. I mean, I said this earlier on the week. I mean, he. I, I just love and appreciate how he attacks the football and how natural he catches the football with his hands. And, and it's real impressive. Not everyone catches the ball naturally in this league. Uh, you know, those 50-50 balls up the field, I mean, just going over guys, two guys, three guys. I mean, it's impressive, impressive. But it also excites me for the challenge that we have as a secondary in the in – the, you know, what, when it's going to come down to. If we, we do our thing and play great, uh, we'll have a great shot at winning. And if not, it's going to be a tough battle. And then you got Boyd on the on the inside. He's, an, he's a veteran. I've been playing against him for a lot of years. Uh, all those choice routes, right, the tough the tough catches over the middle. Uh, you know, he shows up, you know, obviously in the third and short windows and, and makes those tough catches. And, in the, in the, you know, you look to him, the game's on the line. You know, he shows up. So... Obviously a huge challenge, but we, we cannot wait to get on the field and see uh, what we're all about. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you know, the, the biggest changes, I, I, I felt like I, I came right back into it, like I had been here this whole season, which is kind of weird and odd. Uh, but it, it, I had, I had early on like the first game. I kind of tweaked my hammy a little bit, and my growing. So then the following week, just trying to, <laughs> being able to practice and work through that, along with trying to get ready for a game, was a lot of work. And just like, getting your body to do things that it used to do, but it, you haven't done in two years, was, a, an adjustment, obviously. Uh, so that was probably the biggest challenge. The football stuff, being on the field, seeing, practicing, running around. Uh, that's, I could do that all day. It's more so being able to do it every play and not hurting yourself and still progressing so you don't blow your wad in the, in the practice and not even have a chance to play in the game. So it's just managing that, being on a great program, training staff, Tyler Williams, uh, Reggie Scott, the strength staff, I mean, they've been there from 5.30 in the morning till 8, 9 o'clock at night, all throughout the day, helping me, having a great program, strengthening, and getting me, getting me right for this moment that I am as good as I've ever felt maybe in my entire playing career for a game, which is insane to think about because I took so much time off. Then I had to build back up and get hurt a little bit and break down some muscles that I haven't used to this moment where I'm flying high and ready to go. I didn't talk to Les at all, really, until, uh, I mean, it, he was he was he signed off on it from the beginning. So I just talked to the coaches, and then when I circled back to Sean later in the afternoon went to see if it, this was the real deal, uh, it was it was like, all right, let's do this. So uh, Les signed off, and you know, Les Les was like, hey, what else we got to lose? So. Maybe this will work, maybe not. I'm sure he was skeptical like most people, but we made it work. <laughs> no promises were made. Basically, hey, this is this is what it is. This is what you're going to get. No strings attached. Uh, we need you, and we'll see where it goes. Eric, you said that you had decision you wanted to be a role model for your kids and walk the talk and talk the talk. No doubt. Yeah, it was so rewarding uh, with my son's 12U team, and being his head coach and uh, dealing with kids that some most of them never even played tackle football before. Coming from a league where everyone's knows knowledge, elite, right, and then dropping down and 
but was still having the standards of, hey, man, I'm not, there is no excuses. This is, I want, this is what I want and vision for my team, right? And how are we going to get the best out of these kids? How are we going to teach them? How are we going to coach them? Uh, how, how are we going to be patient with them, right? And just seeing it from a different lens, right, from, the, from a coach's point of view, get, gave me a better appreciation of what these guys go through on a daily basis. And uh, like, you, like I said earlier, uh, you know, I never had a championship. I was never part of a championship as a player. And to be able to experience that with my 12 U kids was just special. And, and we'll always have that as a group uh for these guys which is which is inc a credible feat because i played 25 years of to tackle football at every level and i never won one so it was very cool for these boys and and me and the staff to experience that with them and now having the chance to do it back as a player uh you just don't take those things for granted and just trying to preach what i say and give it all you got Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's been pretty special for them. I mean, the, the, my kids have been going to games since they were six months old, right? And I don't know, or or I don't know for a fact if they understand what it what it takes to be at the level that I was at, right? And the hours and the sacrifice and the work, so. Being able to come back in this crazy situation and be able to be almost an example of what it takes to be uh, at the level, at the top of any profession, right, uh, is is has been very cool for me to be able to see that. And hopefully they understand and take that, like, hey, dad's doing this. Dad's there from this time to this time. He's working all day, every day. Then seeing it on a game uh, a game day where they've been there. They, they flew out to Tampa. My wife brought all four of our kids and... Uh, I just hope they understand and, and see that and they can apply it to their lives as they as they, my oldest is going into high school next year and, you know, that they could do anything they want if they put their mind to it and they commit themselves, right, of being great no matter what and not and not accepting anything less, right? I, I try to live my life that way of being great at all costs, a great husband, a great father, a great person in the community, a great coach, a great friend, Uh nothing less is is acceptable and trying to give these kids that example and showing them that it is possible if you give everything you got to it uh hopefully they'll, they'll take it and run with it not just them but anyone that's watching my story thank you man yes Well, this system is uh, is tailored for safeties to be uh, aggressive and use their instincts and vision, right? Their eye discipline and just be able to feel routes, feel concepts, and, and go get it, right? And when Raheem called me and at, you know brought up the idea, he said, "Man, this defense is was designed for you," meaning all the elite traits that I had or possessed over my career was meant for a system like this. And he felt that I could just come in. It, it wouldn't, everything that I do great as a player, I could transfer over immediately as long as I, you know, once I learned the system and which that, you know, I could do that overnight. So uh, once I learned the defense and the verbiage and all that other stuff, uh, that's why they felt so compelled to try to bring me back because they knew Raheem and Coach E and Sean knew just, how I was as a player, that if I was able to come back, that I would be able to uh, excel in the system and, and be able to help everyone out while doing it. Yeah. Hey, how are you? No worries. I got all the time. I'm, I'll get to everybody. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, Utah back in the day uh, was a little unknown mid-major. And uh, if it wasn't for Coach Witt believing in me and having my back really fighting for me, Coach Meyer didn't really want to give me a scholarship at the time. And 
Coach Witt went to bat for me and believed in me and envisioned me as somewhere on the defense, right, and had a plan for me. And the thing that people don't get, people forget about Utah defense, I mean, we play an NFL-style defense there, and they teach you, uh, and it translates immediately to the league. So uh, when I my four years prepared me for not just the moment of, of the league, but prepared me mentally of – what it was what it's going to be like what is the verbiage what are the the concepts what are your scheme uh the different things you do on defense how, how that how is that going to look on sundays right at the next level and at the university of Utah, i mean that's that's what we're known for defense and uh being being prepared and understanding that what you learn there is going to help you at the next level so amongst other things obviously the coaching uh the culture there uh, you know, having to work, having to compete, like nothing was given at our school. doesn't matter if you were an All-American, freshman All-American, like I was my freshman year. I still had to go earn it the next year and earn my starting spot. Like, And that's how it is in the league, that mindset of each year. They're trying to get younger, faster, and cheaper. So if you don't have the mindset that you're going to keep these young boys at bay while also having confidence that you can still help them and teach them along the way, but it's a it's a dog eat dog world, and I learned that early on at the University of Utah. Like you're either gonna go get it or you're gonna get left behind. Of course, I have. I, I talked to him a couple days ago, and he's been there, reaching out to me every step of the way. And I was finally able to go back to a game, home game, a uh, first time in, geez, I think five years, because I was in Baltimore and it was just never worked out. But I went to their last home game. Then I went to the Vegas uh, Pac-12 championship game. Then I went to the Rose Bowl. So just such a monumental moment for our program, going to the Rose Bowl for the first time and being able to finally be retired and being able to support them and be around the program more and, and try to support those guys was really special for me. So uh, Coach Witt, I owe a lot to where I'm standing, sitting here today for him. And... Uh, I don't take those things for granted. I'm lucky to have learned under him. I admire him. I look up to him. And definitely a guy that I value his friendship and, and we're basically family. Jeez. Uh, you know, he's just happy and excited for me. And he, he knows how much this means to me. And, he you know, he expects me to, to go out and play like I always play and go hoist that trophy. So he's he's very cut and dry, very – very serious. Uh, he'll joke a little bit, but he's he's one of a kind. I love him to death. Hi, Eric. Go ahead. All right. So, yes. Well, I'm from Brazil. And love it. Football in Brazil is getting bigger and bigger. Yeah. This is the very first time we're going to broadcast Super Bowl. Oh, let's go. Wow. If Brazilians decide to pick, to pick a team, why do you think they should root for the Rams? If they want to root, I mean, if you want the winner, uh, obviously. <laughs> no. uh, I mean, with football is football is the greatest sport in the world, and I know it's finally getting into other other countries and across the world. And uh, we know what real football is out there, uh, but football that we're playing is a fun, uh, a fun, exciting game, and we play it at the highest levels on this team. Offense, defense, and special teams. And you're going to see a lot of points. You're going to see a lot of hits. And if you like that thing, root for the Rams. Millions of people will be watching on Sunday. Would you invite them to watch you and your team, please? Yes. Everyone in Brazil, let's go. Go Rams. Appreciate you. Love y'all. Let's get this Super Bowl. Yep. It's my turn now. Yes. Espanol. Muy piquito. I don't know. Yes, jeez. Uh, I mean, everyone knows if you're not a Ram fan, you better hop on board in L.A., in San Diego, in Mexico. Let's be great. Come on. Hey, Eric, uh, you were just talking about why fans should root for the Rams. Pretty obvious, but uh, there was a survey. Apparently, a lot more states are rooting for the Bengals. Why is that? I don't know. Don't know, don't care, <laughs> really. Yes, is, it, is it the underdog thing? I mean, clearly, I don't know. you talk about star power, you know, the Rams have an answer there. Yeah, but I mean, I, I don't know. I don't, 
really worry about things I don't control. So if you don't want to root for us, that's fine. I don't care. You do control the Sunday ritual. Will you be doing anything differently? Have you maybe gotten a you know, special suit or anything no. that will be slightly different from the usual Sunday morning? Nah, nah. I'm going to get up. I'm going to get my little protein shake, then go back to the room. Two hours later, I'll eat my pregame meal, get on the bus, head to the stadium, get ready to be great. I mean, everything else, honestly, everything else is irrelevant when you're playing in this game. Like, the fans don't matter, the stadium don't matter, all the halftime show don't matter. Like, you know, that's the focus you got to take. Like, I don't I, I appreciate all that, but I don't really, it doesn't affect me. I don't really care. Like, I, I'll be playing right here for the Super Bowl if, if that's what it took. So, uh you know, I, I just I'm just focused on my job and getting this ring. I, nothing else matters. Hey, bud. <laughs> Good to see you. It's nice to see everybody's faces, man. Let's go. You know, it's I've been up here by myself, so no. Uh, it's been unfortunate. I think I think uh, after this is all said and done, I'm just gonna do a week straight of ice cream celebrations to make up for the last. Five weeks. I've I've won. You know, after the Niner game, I went to just Seven Eleven because it was the only thing that was open, and I got a little got a little pint of ice cream and ate it by myself in my hotel room. I, I think I went actually went I actually went to the facility and got treatment before because I was in bad shape. But I did. I mean, I've had an ice cream, but it's definitely not what it was. But I'm gonna make up for it. I'm gonna make up for it. And when it's all said and done. Uh, the celebrations will happen. I'll get you. Yeah, it's pretty special, man. I've, I've been, I was fortunate enough to play here three years ago, and I got super close with Wit and his family, and just how big his heart is, and just honored to be in his life, in his presence. He's just one unique uh, giant of a man, but even a giant bigger heart. And the the things that he does on a daily basis, how he picks up people, his motivation, how he just thinks outside the box and brings people together, not just on our team, but in the community and across the country. Like, if anyone ever has a chance to just say hello to him and talk to him, they'll say the same thing. He is one unique, amazing individual that's made a lot of change and made a lot of great things, a lot of good in this world because of him and just being a great example. And so uh, I'm fortunate to be brothers with him and would ride or die with that guy no matter what. Love it. Could tell by your style. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know, I love San Diego. We have, we built our home in San Diego. San Diego is our home. We love the people, the city. And I've been in a couple places. Obviously, I went to Baltimore and then L.A. And then they are – there's not a better fan base uh, that root and have your back. And I felt it. Uh, and I love them dearly. And I feel it. I feel it in San Diego. I feel the people that are behind me that are supporting me. I feel the people in Baltimore that are that, that have supported me there. It's, it's a very unique feeling uh, across – Across the board, I feel like everyone wants this to happen for me. Uh, and I just love it, and I can feel the energy. I can feel uh, in my core that that everyone has a stake in it with me. Like, it's not just me going to be out there on Sunday. I feel like everyone that has been there for 15 years is going to be right there beside me and pushing me and giving me the, the energy needed. So I, I really, when I seriously say this, like, I can feel it and just so thankful for the love over the last month that everyone's behind me and wants this for me. And when, if it happens, which I think it will, that it's not just me winning this thing, it's everyone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. Like, I mean, who's kidding? Who, why, how are we kidding ourselves? Like, I was literally picking up my kids five weeks ago, four and a half weeks ago, last on a Tuesday from school, dropping them off to volleyball when I got a call about this crazy idea that they have about me coming back and playing 15, 10, 15 snaps on Monday night five days later. Like, huh? And now I'm sitting here on the cusp of a Super Bowl game starting and, and playing. Like, of course it's surreal, but 
you know, I'm old enough now. It, it would be a little bit different scenario if I was younger and, you know, understanding the, the magnitude of it all. It's like, I'm playing with house money, man. This is, this is just, this doesn't happen. So I have no pressure on me. I don't, I'm just going and playing and doing what I love to do. And whatever happens, happens. Like, this is, this is a bonus. This is like an extra life in a game, right? Like, you just, this just that doesn't happen. So I'm playing like that. I'm trying to give everything I can for my teammates and helping them and being there for them. And, you know, it's, it's worked out so far. We just got one more time, one more time to do it. Yeah, thank you. I'll get you. Don't worry. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think the older you get, you you just appreciate moments when you get them because they're so hard to do. Uh, it's hard to have a great season, and then it's hard to make the playoffs. It's hard to win in the playoffs, and then it's even harder to get to the Super Bowl, right? Like, it took me 15 years to get to my first Super Bowl when initially you thought you'd, you'd have a chance every year, and it just doesn't work that way. So having that leadership, having that, having those older guys in a sense – where they're your core guys, like some of our best players on our team are our older guys, and being able to bounce those th ideas, those 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 thoughts off each other, and then have it gravitate towards your entire team and in those moments where you need to say something, it just resonates more when it's coming from Von Miller, who's a Super Bowl MVP. It comes more when it's from AD, who's the best defensive player in football, right? Or Whitworth, who's played the ageless wonder, who's played at the high level for the longest time ever, like. It, those things matter. I mean, we've we've played so many years to get to this moment that we know how hard it is. And so to say that some people want it more, it's just not true. Like you haven't done it as long as we have to say that you want it more than us. Like it's impossible. Like you, you can't. So uh, we just know the situation. We know what's at stake, and we know that it doesn't happen often. And this may be our last chance for us older guys, especially for me, like I'm done Sunday after the game, like off to my old life. Uh, so we're just trying to uh, relish this moment and understand, and it's not any added pressure. It's not any of that. It's just, man, let's just do whatever we can to have fun, play loose, but have that laser focus that we've had uh, from the onset of this playoff run uh, and it'll carry over. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to rate each team and each defense is different. Uh, I would say with this secondary, uh, you have us, you have the top corner in this league, and you have a core group of young guys with D. Will, D. Long. Darius Williams, Nick Scott. I mean, those guys are up and coming studs. And now we're kind of molding everybody around and moving parts. And then you throw the old guy in there to kind of bring it all together. And uh, getting rat backs is huge. And then, you know, Fuller going down. Like, all those guys had an impact on the season. Like, we wouldn't be in this situation without Fuller, without Rap, without, you know, Kenny Young. Like, he played for us and then got traded, but it's still hit, he still mattered to us, right? So I, I feel like, you know, as of right now, this will be the best secondary because we'll go win it all, right? So, uh, you know, that's the goal. That's the mindset. Hopefully it'll happen. Uh, but to rate each one, you know, I'd have to go down and look at everything. But uh, as of right now, this is the farthest I've been with the secondary. So they're the best. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's just the love and support you get when you when you do go out. You're at you're at you know getting a you know going to Cafe Rio or going to the vitamin shop or I'm trying to think like where I go around Thousand Oaks. Even my last year, you know you go out to dinner at some some of these restaurants. Like you just feel the love, you feel the the excitement. Like you literally have an NFL team in your backyard. Like where how does that happen? You know, and you just see the players walking around and they say what's up. It's just cool. It's 
it's like you know having a NFL team in Ranch Cucamonga when I grew up like it, it it's very unique and uh you know it's always it's always nice to have the support and the love from anybody let alone the people in your community that you're in and and having them the smiles and the hellos and uh it just lifts you up whether you're down or whether you're up uh it's always nice to to see the smiles on people's faces especially without masks on i mean my man, put your mask down, bro. Not you. No, no, this guy right here. Let's see the smile, man. There it is. Yeah, give me some. Love it. Yes, man. Not again. You know, whatever. You can do whatever you want. I'm just saying. No doubt. Oh, my gosh. It would be incredible, right? Like, we all know the history, and we're trying to bring L.A. and bring all the fans back. I know my dad was one of them. Uh, when the LA when they left, he, my dad was a diehard, and he was devastated. He, we have pictures of him, not very smart, but you know, burning all his Rams gear because he was, you know, that's, that's the way it was. You, your team moves, you're not very happy about it. So to be the team, the guys, the core group, to bring him back and bring a Super Bowl here, what? We'll, listen, we'll be etched in history, man. We'll we'll live in eternity. This is this is what we're talking about here, like. We talk, I try to bring this up to the guys, like, listen, everything that has happened up to this point, like, just a little bit more. Like, it'll be worth it to understand that you'll be in the history books. Your, our names will be etched in history. Like, the, conceptually, you don't really understand that, but us older guys do. Uh, and that's what we'll be, man. It's what we'll live together for the rest of our lives as champs. And when you really think like that, it's just, you just got to believe, like, that's going to happen. Yeah. No, I mean, that, that just shows you how hard it is, right? Like, nothing is easy in the NFL. Uh, and that's why you got to take advantage of them when you do get them. My Smitty. Don't, hey, if he has something, if, he, if he's got something to say, you tell him to come tell me right now. <laughs> we were. I know. I have. Got a job to do. Yeah. Yes. It's uh it's just hard to fathom all right where I was talking to Smitty months ago, trying to plan and anyway, we, we I just saw him at the Rose Bowl. In the stands, we were just hyped about that game and being there in this moment. And we were like, hey, let's link up the week of Super Bowl. We'll go hit the links. We'll go out to dinner or something. And now, and now a week later, I get a call, and then my world turns upside down. It's, it's literally uh, it's hard to put into words the, just the, the roller coaster of just life in general, of never thinking you'd ever be in this. Like, I... I told everyone in my, my entire life, my my, my, my my dad, he's you know, he's a, the biggest football fan ever, and I'm and he's like every year, you know, let's go to the Super Bowl. I'm like, Dad, I'm not going to the Super Bowl if I'm not playing in it. Like, what are you talking about, right? And then obviously the two years, I'm like, well, you know, there goes my chance at a Super Bowl. I'm never going to the Super Bowl. You know, everyone wants to come up Super Bowl week. Hey, Eric, please come up. We'll go on TV, radio, doing this. I'm like, look, I'm not in the Super Bowl. Why do I want to go talk about the Super Bowl? I'm not playing in the Super Bowl. It's just. This is not what I want to do, okay? I wish I was playing the Super Bowl, not I want to talk about the guys that are playing the Super Bowl. So, sorry for my rant, but that's that's just how I feel about the Super Bowl, right? It's just something that you only want to experience if you're playing in it or coaching in it, right? And now to be here, being my first Super Bowl, I get to experience it now. So it's just another layer to this insane story of uh, how I'm here, where five weeks ago I was uh, hanging out being a taxi service for the Weddle four, the Weddle four Rugrats who are crazy. Now getting ready to go be great on Sunday and try to hoist that Lombardi, man. Can't wait. <laughs> yeah. Just enjoying the moment and and heart, you know, give it all you got. Uh, this game, this game doesn't last forever. Uh, and you get in what you put in, right? Uh, if you want to be great at this, you can be great, but it takes everything you got and more. It, it literally, 
you have to sacrifice everything, your family, your time, uh, everyone on the outside. It's That's what it takes. And it's so worth it if you want to do it. But if you're not committed and if you're not 100% ready to do that, then you'll be the you'll just be another guy and you'll be phased out after two three years and you'll look back and wish you wish you did wish you would have did more right so I, I just try to explain that to them that uh you know do you want to be great or do you just want to be another guy and it's a simple answer to me i don't want to be around good average people that's just not who i am if you want to strive to be great and be great and and break records and change the game, then I'm all for it and let's go do it. If not, then just don't even talk to me. Pretty blunt, I guess. Anybody else? Any other questions? I got a couple more. I just got one. So you played for many great coaches throughout you know, your career. Yes. Uh, now you are a coach yourself. Uh, yeah. I mean, I hope they get to see it. Uh, it's just, uh, it, it definitely would bring more validity when I say do this on the field or, hey, when I say stick your face in the fan, they understand what I'm talking about, meaning go stick your face in that running back's gut when he's running down the field. So, uh, you know, it just brings uh, another layer to your coaching style and the kids will perk up a little bit more when they, when they see your coach as a Super Bowl champ that, came out of retirement to go throw it in there again. It's uh it's definitely pretty cool for them. Yes. I did. Well, the the I I would think the planets have to align somehow again like they did this time around for both safeties to go down and it's just uh I would put it at a 0. 0.000001 chance, but highly highly unlikely. Last one. Okay. I can tell by your voice. Yes. I haven't I haven't seen it. Do I need to do I need to check it out? Okay. Is it? All right. Really? I'll go check it out, man. There we go. All right. Go Rams, baby.